Well, secondly, look at verse 20. And I'll read 20 through 24 of Matthew 1. But when he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she'll bear a son, and you, you, leader of the family, you, husband and father, you will call his name Jesus. You will be the one that testifies to the fact of who this is born into your family, born through your wife. For it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place, that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife. Point number two, godly dads, number one, are full of compassion. Number two, godly dads respond to the word of God. I mean, they respond to it. Joseph, you know what he could have done? He could have said, wow, that was really a great insight. I'm going to think about that for a while and put it away and gone merrily on his way with his plans. You know what? He responded. He interacted. He, he looked the word of God full in the face as he saw the angel of the Lord in his dream, and he said yes to the Lord. And what I think is fascinating is that, that Joseph had learned earlier in his life to listen to God, and at this critical moment, Joseph listened to God. He listened responsively to God. Did you know our children watch and watch and watch and watch? Let's show them the right things. Let's be listening to God. And when a critical time comes, when a disappointing time comes, when a tragic, when a sorrow-filled, or when a joy-filled, or when an exuberant time comes, listen to God and have his response. It's a wonderful thing, dads, to study your Bible, our Bibles, so that we can be ready. I mean, you already know the key events that are coming up. You know the holidays? I mean, they're the same every year. You know that there's going to be birthdays. You know that there are going to be deaths in the family. You know that there are going to be uh, transitions in the family. You know that there are going to be levels as the children grow and expand in their world and launch out. You know those. I mean, it's kind of like we're all on the same journey, as John was singing about this morning. So why not prepare for those? Why not for the birthdays have a scripture and say, I'd like to give you as your father a birthday verse. Why not for the holidays say, just before we eat this meal, let me read to you what God says at Thanksgiving we ought to read. At Christmas, instead of mom always being the one, right, that's hustling around, dad saying, okay, children, while mom's doing that, let's all gather around. Let me read to you again, or you read with your Bible. See, fathers listen to God, and they they show that. They show that they're listening to God, and they even show the children how they can also be listening to God. But look at chapter 2 with me, please, of Matthew, because I want to show you a third facet of what godly dads look like. Chapter 2, and Joseph was that godly father. And in verse 13, the third point is we learn that godly dads like Joseph stay in touch with God. They not only listen to him, they not only listen and respond, but they, at one time, but they keep on staying in touch with God. They make it their desire to stay in touch with God. This is the flight to Egypt, and I'll read verses 13 down through verse 19. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and there remain until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Now, now just for a second, think about how comforting this is. Have you ever thought that God knows about the disasters and the dangers in life before we do? He knows them all. Did you catch that? God knew what this king was going to do. God knew. In fact, he knew it so long ago, it was was written in the scriptures. Uh, Verse 15, uh, he was there until the death of Herod, the family was, that that which was spoken by the Lord the prophet be fulfilled, saying, Out of Egypt I did call my son. That's uh, in the book of Hosea. Hosea was written 600 years before Christ was born. And God knew 600 years before Joseph got on the scene that Joseph was going to have to stay in touch with him because danger was coming. 
And if God knows about dangers 600 years ahead, he knows about the dangers in our lives too. And have you ever thought about the value of staying sensitively in touch with God to guide your family? That's why it's so important. You can, you can know when danger is coming. God will, through his word, through his spirit, uh, as the Apostle Paul says, that, that we would have the Holy Spirit as the referee, the one that blows the whistle, the peace of God, will keep our hearts and minds the scriptures say that, that if we would hearken to God, our peace would be like a river, our righteousness like the waves of the sea, that he would keep us in perfect peace if we would stay our minds on him, Isaiah 26, 3. And as we do that, if there's anything that's going to sever that perfect peace, we, we pull away from it, and that's how we avoid danger. So Joseph was a godly dad, and he stayed in touch with God. And it says... Uh, in this passage, as I continue reading in verse 16, then Herod saw that he'd been tricked by the Magi. And he was enraged, and he sent, and here comes what the danger God knew about. He slew all the male children which were in Bethlehem, and all of its environs from two years old and under, according to the time which we had, had ascertained from the Magi. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted. Look at verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord, third one, boy, he's staying in touch, appeared in a dream to Joseph and told him what to do next. Fathers, godly dads like Joseph, stay sensitive to God. When you read your Bible, you're not just reading it for you. You're not just reading it for you and your wife. You're reading it for you and your wife and your family. And stay sensitive and share what God teaches you. 